think we've got another absolutely totally boring useless video which you'll get fed up with after two minutes and you won't want to watch it I'm joking I have a video for you today I guarantee you haven't seen one of these anywhere on the internet in this much detail for the first time in about 120 years we're going to video something that doesn't exist anywhere else and that is a Nernst lamp it's the most bonkers bizarre lamp that you've probably ever seen so we're going to crack on we're going to take one apart because these things don't work because they're so old and corroded we're going to try and strip one down and put it all back together and see if we can tickle it back to life then if we do and we get this thing working it will be the first on the internet I've said all that but I've already done it so I know it works so enjoy the video <laughs> Let's have a look inside it, shall we? So, very carefully, unscrew this. Slide that out very carefully. Don't even want to touch that because we'll end up breaking it. Let's put that out of the way. Let's take this bit off. There we go. We need to clean these contacts up a bit there, look. Right, let's give it a bit of a, a clean up. Yeah, that's a proper bad connection on there, isn't it? Let's do something with that. So that's quite a few bits and pieces just for a light bulb. So I need to clean all these bits and pieces up, put it all back together and see what happens. It's old and it's quite corroded. There's a tiny little contact on this. Need to clean that up right on the end. There's the other contact there for the barretta or the ballast. I've done this one a little bit to improve it. I've cleaned the contacts on this relay and it works. Well, I've tried to clean these contacts up as best I can. They're not perfect, but we should get electrical connection on there. All right, to some degree, they were absolutely black and not making contact. They were like that. Well, the relay's working. Let's get a shot from the other side. These little mica covers go back over on top of the relay and then we'll put that uh, ballast back in it. This is the Beretta which is a small glass bulb. It's full of hydrogen and the actual conductor, the filament in there is made of iron and it's very stable over a wide range of voltages so it will give quite a stable output regardless of the load and the resistance changes on the output. So this actually has a resistance of 16 ohms. Let's uh, slide it back into this holder. Got some sort of reasonable connection there. Good, so we've got the relay in that base which works. All the contacts are cleaned up. That Beretta is back in its holder. So now, 
if we put that uh, heater and glower back on the top I wonder what will happen this is the circuit for the lamps this glower doesn't actually pass the electricity until it gets hot so this heater has to heat it first before current will pass through this and emit light so initially the power comes in it goes through these contacts on the relay that are normally closed through the heater heater heats up now the glower will start to pass electricity as it gets hot so as it does so power then begins to flow through this relay coil through this barretta which is our resistor and now we've got a small current flow through the glower now this relay has a small magnetic field going through it because we've got some current going through the glower and in turn this contact opens so now the heater becomes out of circuit it's quite straightforward really isn't it here's a nice close-up of the heater and the actual glower which is the emitter so we've got the spiral bit which is the actual heater and inside there we've got platinum wire coiled around some asbestos rope or cotton and then that's dipped in some oxide so it can't uh, vaporize and oxidize any further because it's already an oxide and it's the same with the actual emitter or the glower in the middle that's made of zirconium oxide there's no wire in it and it doesn't conduct very well under normal circumstances until it's heated once it's heated then electricity will start to pass through it and obviously it glows red hot as it does so and that's the actual light output that tiny straight bar in the middle that is the glower that's the bit what gives us the light these coils just heat it temporarily and then they switch off these things are incredibly fragile if you sneezed on it you'd probably break it but I have repaired these before because you can get on the little connections and remake some uh, wire connections if you have to but it's incredibly fiddly so this is the risky bit should I risk powering it up these things are hideously expensive they're rare and nobody's ever been brave enough or perhaps stupid enough to risk powering one up inside the lamp um, because it uh, could easily be destroyed but this is photonic inductions channel and I think if I didn't attempt it that would be a waste so for you good people I'm going to take this risk I think we'll uh, have a go at powering it up we've certainly got the equipment I'm sure we've got the skills let's do it so the heater's coming up the relay and she's on very good What we're going to do now is turn off the power and then turn it back on. We can see the glower extinguish. The relay has now set back to its parking position to normally closed. When we put the power back on, now the heater comes on until the glower starts to conduct. When the glower conducts, then the uh, relay opens its circuit and the heater goes off. Heater's coming up.
that's the relay heater off glower on Wonderful. That is a very nice light. 110 years later, or more, photonic induction cleans it up and gets the thing going. That's not bad. It's quite bright, really. Run it on DC. One thirty. This is purely the light from this Nernes lamp. That's amazing. I'm impressed. I should turn it off really, shouldn't I? That is super rare. Let's take this off. That there is a very rare event. Lunch lamp working.
So we've got three different learnt lengths. We know this is DC because one pin is slightly higher than the other and it should have had a little pip at the side so you can't insert it the wrong way round. This one's a slightly different design so it's got the heater being the uh, big loops, multiple loops and the actual glower is the single wire going over the top. I don't know if we can get on there. Probably not. This one doesn't work anymore. The heater and glower is uh, totally had it. So I cheated and I put a halogen bulb in that one. But the ballast and relay still works. So three different types. And at least uh, we've seen one working at least. So you can get clear ones, frosted ones, pearl ones. Um, just put it on there very carefully. So it goes in there and a little twist and a little clip goes up. He says to hold it in there. Quite sweet, aren't they? Just let me know when you're getting bored with videos, and I'll stop doing them. There's not much chance of that, is there? I hope you did find that interesting. It's very rare and it's documented and now it's on the internet and everybody can see it. Otherwise these things just sit in a box and they're never going to be seen. So that's why I like YouTube as well because I can put it on the internet and we can all share these wonderful things. I know not everybody thinks these things are wonderful but, you know, it's nice, isn't it? I have to confess, even for me, that was quite an honour and a privilege to actually see one of those Nernst lamps operate as it should do, because as I say that is such a rare thing to see, where they're all intact and working, uh, it's just unbelievable really. But I'm glad I shared it, and I hope you enjoyed it, there is always more where that comes from. I will see you very very soon, thank you very much for watching, bye bye.